welcome to a brand new vlog. I'm Sophie, in case you're new here. I just made myself this adorable little teeny tiny ice latte and it's really yummy. So today I am gonna take you along on a little meal prepping journey. It is Monday. It's about 11, 15 a.m. I am about to go to, well first I'm gonna go to my mom's and do a little workout at her gym and do a little hot tub because that just sounds like a really lovely way to start my week. But after that, we're going to the grocery store. We're gonna get everything we need to make some delicious meals and snacks and prep some fun little like side things for the week. And I'm really looking forward to it. By the way, I'm a total beginner at this meal prepping stuff. I've never really followed a good routine of meal prepping. I've done some like here and there, but I've never like stuck to a good meal prepping routine. So. This is me trying to get into that. If you watched my video last week, I was talking about how one of my biggest 2024 goals is to just get into a better cooking routine, cook way more at home, and just like be more organized in the kitchen and like have a good cooking routine basically. So that is what we are working on today. We actually are leaving in less than a week. Um, we leave on, today's Monday and we leave on Sunday for Las Vegas and we're gonna be there for a whole week. I don't want anything to go to waste basically. So. Um, I'm not gonna make like too many things, but I did make a little list of the things that I wanna try to make today. So first things first, I wanna do pickled onions because these are just delicious. Like you can throw them on pretty much anything and they're so yummy. I love them with tacos. I just love pickled onions and I never make them. So I never have them in the house. So we're gonna pickle some onions and then I wanna make some energy bites. I've made these before and they're so, so good. So we're gonna do those. We have like a quick snack to grab throughout the week. I think I wanna make some chia seed puddings. I also wanna get a bunch of fruit and like wash it and prep it so it's ready to go. And then I'm gonna make a slow cooker white chicken chili. I found this recipe on the New York Times app, like the cooking app, and it looks so, so yummy and has really good reviews. So we're gonna do that in the slow cooker. I feel like that's gonna be a good meal that we can have for like lunches and stuff throughout the week as well. So that's what I have so far. I also already baked some cookies this morning, but I made the dough yesterday and I made half of the batch yesterday. We went to my mom's house last night and I baked them while we were over there and they're so, so good. They're ginger snaps, which sounds so Christmassy and I know we're past Christmas, but I still had all the ingredients to make them and Josh requested that I make them. So I made them and they were so, so good. Um, so I baked the second part of that batch this morning just so that the dough wouldn't go to waste because I didn't want it to like get dried out in the fridge. So we already baked cookies today, which was a nice cozy way to start the morning. So the first step of this meal prepping day is making a grocery list. It might not seem like I'm making so much stuff today, but I didn't really wanna bite off more than I could chew, so to speak. Um, since it's my first week doing this, I wanted it to be like fun, manageable, and just, you know, baby steps. And then maybe when we get back from Las Vegas, I can try to make like more recipes and do more like prepped veggies and make sauces and things like that. Okay, I'm talking too much. I'm gonna get this grocery list made and then we're gonna go. Okay, the grocery list has been made that did not take long at all and there's really not that many things I need, which I'm very pleased about. So let's get cooking. Okay, just got to my mom's house and we are heading to her gym area now and the pool area. Let's see what she thinks about being on the vlog. You wanna be on the vlog? <laughs> you don't wanna be on camera? I don't think so. Okay, that's fine. We are heading to her gym area that's in her neighborhood. Oh, you're on the camera. Are you okay with that? Uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She just moved into this neighborhood that is like a resort. There's like a beautiful gym, beautiful pool area, hot tubs, all this stuff. And we've neither of us have used it yet, even though she's been living here for what, like a month? Oh my gosh, I moved in 12 <laughs> days ago. Okay, she's lived here for a couple weeks and we've yet to enjoy the facilities. So we're gonna go do it this morning. We need a little workout. Mom was just telling me how she watched my vlog this morning, the previous vlog I posted. Mm -hmm. Keep your hands on the wheel. <laughs> and it really stressed her out, me driving and vlogging at the same time. So I'm sorry if that's stressful. I'm gonna try not to do that anymore. I'll just <laughs> vlog when I'm at a stoplight or in a parking spot because I did also kind of think like this might give people motion sickness or it might make them stressed out, so. Yeah, I was anyway. very stressed. Also, it's really loud when you're driving on the road and trying to talk. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. We just got to the grocery store. My mom made the most delicious lunch. It was like lasagna type of like soupy stew thing. I don't know. I'm not making it sound good, but it was 10 out of 10 amazing with a little salad 
and some toast so that was really really yummy so i'm i'm glad that i had that right before coming here because i hate grocery shopping when i'm hungry because i just buy everything we had a lovely little workout we basically just did like 20 minutes on the treadmill with like a little incline and a little ab routine so we took it easy but it felt really really good and then we decided not to do the hot tub just because it was like getting late in the day and we needed to get on <laughs> with our lives um so we just put our legs in for a second and it felt so so nice anyway okay i'm blabbering let's go grocery shop i always have airpods in at the grocery store by the way I just like listen to a podcast or an audiobook and it just makes grocery shopping so much more enjoyable. Here is the little grocery haul. This is hopefully gonna last us a week. I feel like I'll get better at judging how much we need and how much we eat and stuff. Let me just run you through what we got. This is the produce stuff that we got. I got some raspberries. I decided I wanna make a fruit salad um, to like for the week cause it's so good to put it with my yogurt to so just to have this like a midday snack or dessert with ice cream at night. It's just so, so yummy. So I got raspberries to add to the chia puddings and also for the fruit salad. I got some onions. Like I said, I'm gonna pickle some onions. Here's one over here too. Um, cilantro, jalapeno for the recipe tonight. Kiwis for fruit salad, limes for fruit salad. I've been obsessed with Nusa lately. I think I talked about them in my last vlog too, but lemon Nusa is supreme. Got some chicken thighs for the soup tonight. This avocado is like gorgeously ripe. I never usually buy these big avocados like this. I usually get the mini ones, but it just felt really nice. Some corn, I could not find any organic corn, which is really annoying, but that's for the soup tonight. My favorite butter for my English muffins. Got some sourdough English muffins. Got some strawberry preserves. I think I'm gonna use this to layer in the chia pudding as well, but it's just so yummy. On English muffins, on toast, on whatever. These McVitie's milk chocolate digestives are my love language. I love them so much. This with a cup of tea at night or like, you know, afternoon snack so flipping good they're definitely not good for you but they're just absolutely wonderful love them i got more of this because we were running very very low even though i saw them at costco they have like giant ones of these at costco for a way better price so maybe next time i'll get it at costco we actually don't have a costco membership yet but soon we will get one i got some sumo mandarins these are so good you guys and i'll put some of these in the fruit salad and then this is for the recipe tonight these were buy one get one free and i saw them after i already got this chicken broth but yeah, I just thought it's always good to have them and bone broth is a little better for you than chicken broth probably. And then this was a random little spur of the moment, um, what's called impulse purchase. They had this living proof dry shampoo. I think I've used like the mini version of this, like a travel size before and I really, really liked it. And it was $20 and it's usually 30. So I thought I would give it a try. I always need dry shampoo. I go through dry shampoo so fast. And I just want to get one that like I like and I can always repurchase. And this is like a pretty good price for what it is. So got that. I didn't know that they carried this brand at Publix, but they did. So anyway, I'm going to put all this away and then we will get to making that uh, white bean chili slow cooker soup recipe. Okay, I've got all the things I need out for my white chicken chili. We're gonna melt some butter right now. This specific recipe is from the New York Times cooking section and I think you might need a subscription or maybe you only need a subscription if you visited the website more than a certain amount of times, but I think it's just like $5 a month or something and you can access the New York Times cooking app and I have found it to be such a good resource because you like the whole internet is a little bit overwhelming when I'm looking for a recipe. I just wanna like go to one place and find it because I know I can like trust this app. I have every single recipe I've done so far from New York Times. I probably have done like 10-ish recipes. They are all so incredibly good and pretty easy for the most part. So um, yeah, just wanted to let you know that. I will link all the recipes or type them out if I can't link them below in the description. I just wanted to say this might be really obvious, but this has been such a game changer with my cooking is to always have a little discard bowl just for throwing your scraps in and stuff like that, just to keep it like off of your work surface. It just helps to keep it tidy and it's it just makes me happy. My onion goggles broke and so now I just have to suffer through the pain. I have the most sensitive eyes ever. I'm already, it's already starting 
Oh no, I just gotta get through this. I need to order myself some new onion goggles. Maybe I should do that today. It's literally the worst. I'm not, okay? Okay, my first fail of this recipe is I got whole green chilies instead of chopped. And so I'm sitting here chopping them and it's taking forever, which is so annoying, but we will get there. Guys, this Dutch oven is so heavy that it makes transferring this stuff very difficult, but we got there in the end. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, cooking raw chicken, just dealing with raw meat in general, especially raw chicken, freaks me out. I was a vegetarian pretty much from when I was like 15 till a few years ago. So cooking with meat is a little bit freaky for me. I'm still very much a beginner at it, but this recipe calls for chicken thighs. And I don't know if I'm supposed to like take off this white skin stuff before I put it in the pot. So I just tried to call my mom, but she's not picking up. Oh, I think she just texted me back though. Okay, she says to leave it on. Okay, we have an answer. I'm gonna leave it on. I'm supposed to salt it. I don't know if I'm supposed to rinse it off first. Do I need to wash it, question mark? Like rinse it in the sink, question mark? Okay, mom says to rinse it, pat dry with paper towel, put a little bit of oil, and then put salt, and then put it in. So that is what I'm gonna do, because mom always knows best. Now don't get me wrong, I have cooked raw chicken many a time, but I, I usually just do like chicken breast, and so it just feels <laughs> A lot different doing chicken thighs. I think I just put way too much oil. I definitely did. Um, it just feels way different when it has like the bones still in there and stuff. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of extra terrifying. And then there's also the added layer of me being paranoid that I'm gonna contaminate my kitchen or myself with salmonella because you know you have to wash your hands and you can't touch anything when you have raw chicken on your hands so then i feel like my whole kitchen is like a health hazard because i'm scared that like me touching the salt right now is probably contaminating the salt container so now i need to wash the salt container <laughs> you know what i mean Let's flip them i guess guys this mm -mm, mm -mm. see these are the th this is no i really need to get over myself because this is just like part of being a good like homemaker housewife <laughs> So they're gonna cook in here for several hours and then I'm gonna take them out, shred them, and put them back in once they're cooked. Okay, three cups of chicken stock is going in. This is two cans of beans. Okay, now we're just gonna let her do her thing. Okay, moving on to the pickled onions. I'm using Nara Smith's recipe, who <laughs> is a TikToker that I've recently discovered and become obsessed with. I'll link her video below for the recipe. It's really, really simple. She uses a mandolin, but we don't have a mandolin, so we do have a food processor that has like a slicer uh, blade attachment thing. So <laughs> we've never used it before, so kind of a gamble. But I think it might work, and it might be a really good, like, fast hack to doing it instead of just mandolining it because I don't have one of those and it would take me six years to slice them thinly with a knife. I'm just going to peel them and then cut them in half and then try to feed them through the processor. Okay. Wish us luck. <gasps> oh, that is brilliant. Oh my gosh. It's so fast. It's shocking how fast Yeah, it, it is. is crazy. Oh. Perfect slices, every single one perfect. I love this machine. That is it's pretty good, actually. so good. I can't believe how easy that was. Okay, I'm gonna transfer them to my jar. I don't know if this jar is gonna be big enough. I might have to use two of them. Oh my gosh, my eyes are now burning. <laughs> and then the rest can go in the smaller jar. The brine recipe is very simple. It's just two cups of water, which I already put in, and then two cups of white vinegar. I'm doing now. And then a fourth cup of brown sugar. And we are just gonna melt that sugar and then pour this over the onions and that's that. Okay, the sugar has melted. I'm pouring it over. It's really warm, but it's not like hot or boiling or anything. So I'm just gonna cover that. Oh, I don't know if I have enough brine for all of it, do I? Oh yeah. 
It's literally the perfect amount. Okay, that is it for the pickled onions. That was so easy and quick, especially thanks to my food processor, which I had no idea I could do that. I'm still blown away. So these are gonna go in the fridge, and then I think that they'll be good to go for tomorrow. I'll give this one to my mama so she can enjoy them too. Here I am. This is, oh, hey, I have a gift for you. I made you some pickled onions. Hello, hello. Okay, it is indeed a whole day later <laughs> and I'm about to make the cheese seed pudding. This was not the plan. I meant to do everything in one day, but I got such a late start. Real, like I didn't start till 3.15 I think yesterday, like got home from the grocery store around 3. And so I just didn't really think it would take that long to do everything you need to do. And then um, it was getting dark and then Josh got home and he, he and my mom wanted to go to the mall. And I was like, well, I'm gonna come with you to the mall. So <laughs> we ended up going to the mall. It was a lovely time. I got a really cute new bag from Lulu. I ended up impulse purchasing this adorable little Lululemon belt bag, which I love very, very much. I'm very happy with my impulse purchase. I really did need a new bag, so it's it's a justified purchase. But anyway, let me just show you. It's got so many pouches. It's big enough to fit my vlog camera, my Kindle, all the things that I need, but it's not like really big because it folds over. And it looks like it might be annoying, like the flap, but it's so easy when it's on you. Just to open it up, dig around. I love it, I'm very excited about this little purchase. And it was only like $78. I feel like that's a good price for a Lululemon bag that I'll wear like every single day. So anyway, I did plan to have the soup that I made yesterday for dinner, but by the time it was like cooking, it needed six or four to six hours to be ready to eat. And by that time it was like 10 p.m. So while we were out at the mall, we went ahead and had a lovely dinner out, which was nice. We went to Capitol Grill, so good. They have delicious French onion soup and the best lobster mac and cheese in the world. It's so good. And the best bread basket as well. I love Capitol Grill. Chia seed pudding time. I am going to make this chia seed pudding first because I know that the chia seeds need to like soak. It might take overnight in the fridge or it might just take a couple hours. Honestly, I don't know. We're gonna find out together. I could probably Google that, but we're doing coconut milk chia seed pudding, and then I'm gonna layer it with some strawberry preserves and raspberries on top, but that will be after the chia seeds and coconut milk um, mix and do their thing. I'm just kind of following a bunch of different recipes that I saw on TikTok and hoping for the best. I feel like chia pudding is kind of one of those things that's really hard to mess up, hopefully, knock on wood. This coconut milk is completely solid on top. So just gonna give that a little mix. So half a cup of chia seeds and then, oh, it's kind of chunky still. I think it's okay. I'm gonna whisk it in with the seeds once it's in there. So two cups of coconut milk. Oh, it's exactly one can, that's perfect. I'm doing a dash of vanilla. That might've been a lot. And then I'm gonna do like a tablespoon of maple syrup. I don't want this, I want this to be very slightly sweet because I'm gonna layer it with the strawberry preserves and this is very sweet. I think that this will be a good amount for at least two servings, which is all I wanna make this go around because first of all, I don't know if I'm gonna love it. And second of all, we are going out of town on Sunday, so we don't need that much food in the house, but that looks so fun. Okay, I'm just covering this up. I really wanna order some of those like uh, reusable bowl covers. I feel like that would be very useful. I'm going to pop this in the fridge. We can check on her in a couple hours and see if she's ready to assemble into our little pots. Okay, I have decided that we are actually going to do energy balls first because I think that it's going to take the longest. For this recipe, I'm just kind of doing my own thing. I do have a recipe pulled up just to give me like a good idea of the ratios that I need, but I'm putting in like totally different ingredients. So I'll just have to type it out and let you know what I did. We are using dates, oats, apricots, peanut butter, a little bit of salt, vanilla, and I'm also gonna do chocolate chips. So I'm gonna do one cup of oats. I guess I'll do like five dates, five apricots. We'll see, we can always see how the texture is and then adjust accordingly. Make sure to take the pits out because that would be very bad if you left them in. It probably would break my machine. up this mixture until it's the right consistency and then I'm gonna add in my chocolate chips I feel like the last second just pulse for a tiny bit because I don't want them to get too I want them to remain chunky okay it looks incredibly dry so I'm definitely gonna have to add 
something more liquidy, maybe more dates. Okay, a little bit of maple syrup, not too much because I don't want them to be overly sweet and the dates are definitely quite sweet on their own. Okay, I added like three more dates. I think one issue could be that my dates are kind of dry and usually they're, they can be juicy sometimes, which is obviously preferred. I'm just testing the texture to see if it will form into a ball and it is forming into a ball. Okay. All right, this is exciting. I'm gonna add my chocolate chips. This smells so good, oh my gosh. Got some semi-sweet chocolate chunks going in. That's how many I'm putting in. I think it'll be enough. And also, so you can see the texture. Okay, this is what we're working with. I'm just gonna start rolling them up. I'm putting it in a bowl because I just need like, I feel like this will be easier to just like grab instead of having to deal with that thing in the middle. That is very satisfying to do. Okay, first ball done. I think it looks really good and it feels quite sturdy. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying this process. Ta-da! They look really cute. Okay, popping these in the fridge. We can try them later. Maybe I should try one now. Yeah, let me try one now, even though I'm really not hungry. I do feel like these will be better when they're cold, but I, for the sake of the video, we need to do a taste test. Mmm. Mm-hmm. So much better than I thought they would be. They're like a 10 out of 10. I'm not even exaggerating. They're so, so good. And these are packed with good nutrition. So these are just gonna be such a good little snack that I can grab when I'm craving a little sweet treat or I just need a little boost. I'm very excited about these. I have made energy bites before, but I followed this recipe pretty specifically and like they were really good, but I wasn't like obsessed with them. So I never made them again. Maybe I made them a few times. Anyway, the point is these are way better. And I just kind of winged the recipe, which makes me feel really good. So I will write down as best as I can my measurements. You saw I was just kind of like pouring stuff in. I'm so happy that those were a success. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna do fruit salad. I'm using this big ugly chopping board because I needed like a big surface that juice can kind of flow all over. We are gonna do like three kiwis, one lime, one nectarine. You just like make up what you think will be good together. Two sumo mandarins. I might add more of these if I feel like it needs it. Then we have raspberries, blueberries, pomegranate. I'm gonna have to go outside to peel this because it like splatters all over the kitchen and like gets on the blinds and everything every time I do it inside. Um, so I've learned to go outside to peel my pomegranate. And then one nice juicy Honeycrisp apple to give it some crunch. By the way, when you're doing your chopping of your fruit, do not think that it has to be perfect in any way. I just kind of very roughly chop it because I'm gonna mix it quite aggressively so that all the juices and all the flavors get together and that's what makes a fruit salad so magical. Um, I got inspired this past summer to make magical fruit salads because I read Ellen Hildebrand's book called The Five Star Weekend. Sorry, when I'm talking to you, I feel like you need to see my face. So I read The Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. In this book, the main character is a really famous food blogger and she's hosting this amazing weekend <laughs> and she invites all of her friends over and she makes this five star fruit salad, she calls it. I think that's what she calls it. It is so insanely good. I can't remember all the exact fruits that she has in there, but it's pretty similar to this. Um, I would love to have a mango in here, but I couldn't find one that was ripe yesterday. Anyway, reading that book inspired me to make a fruit salad because it just sounded so good. And I'm such a fruit person. Like I could eat fruit all day, every day. You guys know I've talked about my little fruit diet <laughs> and all that stuff on here. So anyway, I did make a couple of fruit salads this past summer and then me and Josh just became addicted to them and we've made them like a ton. Um, so yeah. I thought that it would be a good addition to this vlog since it's something that I actually already do quite often. By the way, these are golden kiwis in case you're wondering why they look so different and they're not like nice green, regular looking kiwis. <laughs> it's cause they're golden kiwis. Are the berries oh I have to do the pomegranate too oh gosh you know what <laughs> I think I'm gonna just skip the pomegranate for this specific fruit salad okay now the lime this is honestly probably the most important part of this fruit salad I'm gonna do like three-fourths of the juice of this lime I don't want to overpower I don't want it to be way too tangy but lime just adds such a specialness to it. It just makes everything, it like amplifies all the flavors and makes them way better. Now the fun part, I'm just gonna mix this. 
for a long time until I feel like all the juices are kind of mixing together. There's a word for it. I just can never think of that word. This is literally making my mouth water like wow. And I will say it kind of just tastes better and better the longer it sits because all the juices and the flavors keep melding and it just tastes magical. It's like candy. I would definitely add mango if you can do it, if you have it, if it's ripe. I would not recommend adding banana or strawberries because they get kind of gross and like slimy when they're chopped up. Here is my gorgeous fruit salad all mixed up. Some of you might not think it looks that good. I think this looks like heaven. Like I said, it will just taste better and better like tomorrow and the next day and the next day. I don't know if it'll last long because me and Josh we can eat this up real fast. It's so good. We both love it so much. Josh is gonna be so excited when he comes home and sees all the goodies in the fridge. Guys, I'm so excited because the chia pudding looks like chia pudding, like the texture is there. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these. I'm recording an episode of Jolly Cove tonight with SG and Isabella. I'm so excited about it. Um, we're talking about the book Divine Rivals, which if you're a book girly, you know Divine Rivals was like all the rage a few months ago. By the way, Jolly Cove is my book club podcast. I just talk about it like you know what it is, but I haven't really talked about it that much on vlogs. So we're going to do one monthly book club episode a month, and then I'll probably sprinkle in some more episodes. That one a month will be with SG and Isabella. So those are like the core episodes. And then I'll probably sprinkle in some more episodes. I'm gonna try to do some like author interviews and like other special guests and stuff like that. So yeah, we're recording that tonight and I'm very excited about it. That episode will be out on Monday, January 22nd. So I don't know when you're watching this, but it's coming out soon. And okay, let's get these chia puddings going. I'm doing a little layer of strawberry jam strawberry preserves on the bottom by the way i'm using the bon maman strawberry jams this is the best jam company that i've found so far and then we're gonna do our chia pudding i do feel like this could be more liquidy so next time i'll probably add a little bit more coconut milk or maybe i'll just do a little bit less chia seeds i mean it looks really good but personally i think i would want it to be like a little bit more milky the way that i wish i had some like beautiful natural light for you guys right now it's currently six o'clock it's almost six o'clock it's 5 53 <laughs> okay so that's how it's looking and then i'm gonna do a little bit more jam on top and then top it off with raspberries freshly washed raspberries are going on top oops here we have our first chia seed pudding i feel like this is a good portion hopefully and then i'm gonna put the second one in this weck jar i wish i had like matching little jars but whatever okay second chia pudding is done i'm literally putting my phone flashlight on it so you can see <laughs> properly okay i'm actually just gonna take one bite to taste test because i just it looks really good and it sounds yummy and i don't want to wait till the morning to tell you guys if it's good or not so here we go oh my gosh no i'm kind of freaking out because i didn't expect to like it this much i've had chia put it chia seed puddings in the past from like restaurants or juice bars or whatever and they're always fine but they're never like, I want more. This is insanely good. My only little tweak that I would make to it is I would probably put less maple syrup or maybe no maple syrup because it is quite sweet with the strawberry jam. Or maybe I would just do a little bit less of the jam um, because it definitely sweetens it up a lot. So that's my one. It's just like half of a notch too sweet. Okay, here is my white chicken chili. It's, um, the lighting is not doing it justice, but to me, this looks gorgeous let's give her a taste there's a lot of chicken in here i'm not trying to be dramatic but this is insanely good every single thing that i've made has been like basically 10 out of 10. i'm so impressed it does have quite a kick to it you guys saw me put a whole jalapeno in here and i'm not a huge spicy person like i can deal with like medium spice but this has like the perfect kick to it where it's like on the edge of being too spicy for me but it's not too spicy Hopefully, I mean, as I eat more, it might get spicier and spicier, but it's really good. No, no, you guys. <laughs> I just splattered some freaking spicy jalapeno juice in my eye. And by spicy jalapeno juice, I mean the broth. I was just talking about how spicy that was. And then a little drop of it just somehow just went straight into my eyeball. <laughs> And I'm home alone, so I can't even, like, scream for help or, like, make it dramatic and make Josh feel bad for me, you know? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was the stupidest thing ever. I honestly momentarily thought I was going to be blind. Wow, I look crazy now because I just wiped off all the makeup from this eye. Not only is it spicy, but it's, like, hot in temperature. So I just had 
a very hot spicy liquid go into my eyeball. Thankfully it was just like a tiny drop, but honestly I, I saw my life flash before my eyes. I just rinsed it out profusely for the last like, I don't know, five minutes and it feels a lot better. <laughs> I'm just remembering that the last clip that I filmed last night was <laughs> me getting soup, spicy hot soup in my eye. I did survive, but it was very painful. And anyway, I, after that moment, I was like, I'm done with the vlog for tonight. Like I have to, for my mental health, I need to go. And I had to go set up to record at Jolly Cove anyway. So that's what I did. And the episode was so fun to record. Oh my gosh, we had a blast. It might be one of my favorite episodes ever for Jolly Cove. So that was really fun. I just have the best time with SG and Isabella, like us three talking about books, like what's better than that it's so fun and we go off on like a million tangents and talk about all kinds of stuff so yeah if you want to listen to a new podcast if you're a book girly you should check out jolly cove i'll link it below of course this vlog will be up on thursday and then that jolly cove episode is going up on monday so a few days from now if you're watching this the day that it comes out anyway i need to go enjoy my lunch i'm just like letting it cool down right now because it's very very hot i'll try not to get it splashed into my eye again because <laughs> That wasn't very fun, but before I leave you, let me show you all the fruits of our labor from this vlog. There's the chia pudding. I ate half of the other pot of chia pudding this morning. It was so yummy. Um, and then for the soup, it probably looks a little different because I added some cream to it just to like lower down the spice level just a tiny bit. And it's so, so yummy. It looks more yellow once you um, heat it up. So I'm having this for lunch right now. I had also some fruit salad for breakfast. It's so yummy. I ate so much of it. Me and Josh have already made a good dent in the fruit salad and in this um, soup. It feels so satisfying having all these things just ready to go in the fridge for the week. So I'm excited to continue with my food prepping every week and like adding on to it and like trying more fun recipes and adventurous recipes. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. Please let me know if you did enjoy it in the comments. It won't really hurt my feelings if you didn't love this vlog because I know it was just kind of like all in the kitchen all in one place. So I don't know if that's like what you're interested in or if you'd rather me just like take you along a few days in the life and then like incorporate this sort of thing into it we're still figuring out our content vibes for the year but homey cozy content is really what i'm after so hopefully this ticked that box and i'm just blabbering on now so i'm gonna go enjoy this yummy soup i almost forgot to mention again all the recipes will be linked below or i'll type them out below if i don't have a link for it um and yeah Hope you enjoyed. I love you guys so much. Have a beautiful day and I will see you very soon in another vlog. Bye.